All right, the next section we're going to do here um, is going to be about changes in women's experiences. Um, we know that for millennia, uh, women had not had equal rights. Women had way less than equal, maybe no rights. Um, women were often treated as property. Marriages were arranged. Women given to, to men to connect families in, in their marriage and, and expected to birth and take care of children as, as their really only thing. Um, and we mentioned that during the Enlightenment, we have people like uh, Mary Wollcraftstone, I believe there was a woman named Estelle before her, I can't think of her first name, who worked towards saying, hey, women should have rights too. Um, and we're gonna find that during this period, a great change in society, one of the great changes is that women are gonna fight for and eventually earn some rights. Really, the, the most important right was the right to vote. But um, before we, we get there, we're gonna, um, we're gonna start with the fact that women also had now new job opportunities in, in the cities, right? Um, these you know, non-skilled labor jobs like um, clerks, typists, secretary, um, sometimes sales clerks, these are people who just kind of file and do the back end of business jobs. Um, I was a clerk once when I was 18 and uh, my car broke down. I need to get, get a full-time job so I can get to and from school. I, I took a job as a, as a sales clerk and I filed papers for six months and made enough money to, to buy a car. Um, also jobs in as nurses, teachers, um, and social services become more of a lower middle class style pay jobs for women who kind of skilled labor jobs. Um, we're also seeing now that middle class families largely don't pay people to take care of their kids. They, they take care of them themselves. And with the expanded amount of time that people have outside of work, we're seeing more family togetherness. Um, we're also seeing that birth rates go down um, in, in a large part um, because improved economic conditions um, and more access to birth control, um, which gives women the ability to control when they have children versus um, not. Um, we, all, we also are gonna find that um, child labor becomes less of a thing and, and children are gonna start finding their ways into school more. So again, we're just seeing this shift from a society that we really couldn't recognize to now a society that looks familiar, right? Kids go to school, um, maybe mom and dad work, they, they have some free time, they, they spend time with their kids. Um, and a lot of this also we're gonna find now this movement of feminism. Um, I've mentioned feminism in the past when we talked about Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, but if Mary Wollstonecraft and, and Claire, no, Mary Estelle, I forget her first name, were not the first wave of feminism, which some argue that they were, this is the first wave. Or maybe this is the second wave, the women's suffrage movement. Women demanding the right to vote. Um, and when women have the right to vote, now you can't exclude them or they will vote you out. Okay, this gives women a right to equality in society, to, to the, their voice being heard. Um, women like, um, so we're going to see that in the late 1800s, a movement begins, women start to have meetings where they would show up and say, look, we, we need equal rights. We, we need to stop being treated like less than equal people. Um, and the way to do that is to get the right to vote. Uh, keep in mind that slaves had the right to vote in America, although kind of made very challenging and difficult in the late 1800s due to Jim Crow laws, but, but women didn't, okay? And women said, look, it, there's no reason why we, we aren't, shouldn't have the right to vote as well. This same movement 
is going to try and work to end alcohol. Okay, it, it's not well publicized, but the women achieving the right to vote in this country, which came 20, 30 years after a lot of European countries, um, was corresponded with the 18th Amendment to the Constitution, which was prohibition. And the reason it, that, that the women's suffrage movement fought for both, because largely, well, bars back then were more like saloons, think Wild Wild West saloons, male only. Okay, and oftentimes what would happen is these men would work these really long, hard jobs. They would get off work and they would go to the saloon and then they would come home drunk to their family. So women who fought for the right to vote during this period are also going to fight to end alcohol. Now that, that doesn't last, that prohibition only lasts for 13 years and they overturn it, they say that was a mistake. Um, but women do also earn the right to vote in our country around the after World War I, around 1919. Um, an amendment is passed that says women do have the right to vote. And, and this will really change everything because now every election, every choice, every decision um, for leadership in our country is going to have a woman's opinion as well. Um, and, and just to kind of throw it out there, um, the person who won the 2020 election, uh, President-elect Joe Biden, he got majority of women's votes, but not the majority of men's vote. So women kind of chose him more than men did. Um, women voted a higher clip than men do in our country nowadays. I think it's like 52% women, 48% men. Women are very influential. We have a woman vice president for the first time coming up here in January. So um, it, it's been a long, slow crawl to get here, but we're, we're seeing um, women earning rights, equality. And, and this movement we're gonna call feminism. I, I, feminism simply means, and you should, you should Google it, feminism, definition, Webster's dictionary, liable source, equality under the law, equality in society, and equality in the workplace, okay? And, and, and in 1920, they get the right to vote, but it's gonna continue to be a slow march to get to where we are today. And some people would suggest that we still have a ways to go before women achieve full equality in our society. Um, but the right to vote was the first step.